Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are with Steve Campbell, the Brain Whisperer. Hi. Good to see you again, Steve. Thank you. Good to see you. It's always good to see you. Hi, You're Steve. so smart. Good to see you as well. I have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. And you've gone over this many times, but um, I, I think it's worth uh, repeating, particularly since uh, it's at the beginning of the year and uh, yeah. uh, people tend to make resolutions that they break, Time you know, for resolutions. Uh, yes. diet, I'm going to exercise, uh, I'm going to paint this, yeah. I'm going to paint all four rooms instead of just one room or whatever yeah. it happens to be. Uh, is there a, a, a good way for us to uh, gather, because I, I, we know that the brain believes everything we tell it. Uh, you've said so many times, but if I tell it, hey, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I don't, well, that seems to fly in the face of that. So uh, help, help us understand what's really going on here and, and how we deal with broken resolutions. Okay, let me, uh, believe it or not, you just revealed the answer. Let me st start with a story that illustrates what does not work so we can talk about what does. My wife and I have been married for about 50 years, and during the first 10 years of our marriage, she was a smoker. And every January 1st, she would say, this is the year, this is the year, this is the year, I'm going to quit smoking. And it would last a week, a month, and then she would go back to smoking. There's two reasons why it didn't work. Number one, she said to myself, I'm going to quit smoking. Now, here's a little characteristic of the brain that's very interesting that most people don't know. When you say, I will do this, or I'm going to do that, you know how your brain reacts to that? Wonderful. Good luck. Hope you do. I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> because I have no idea what's going to happen in the future. Neither do I care because I am so busy dealing with the present. So you put your goals all in the future someplace, and I don't have to do a thing. And resolutions don't start here. They start up here. They start with what you think. So no. let me illustrate. Let me illustrate. So Mary would say, I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to smoke in. And the brain said, good luck. Hope you do. I'm going to go take a nap. Didn't work because all of her resolutions were out there somewhere and the brain had no incentive to help her. Then one summer, she went home to watch her father die of emphysema, which is a horrible way to die. And I picked her up at SFO a week later. She looked at me and she said, you are looking at a non-smoker. And she has a smoke sense. Now, what happened? What was the difference? During all those years when she would do her resolutions, she would see herself as a smoker who was trying not to smoke. That didn't work. She would also put her resolutions in the future someplace. That didn't work. She also saw herself as a smoker who wasn't smoking. That didn't work. And she would he say to herself, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I used this to illustrate this when I used to be a dean in a college. Whenever a student came to my office and she said, I'm really trying, I would put something in front of her and I'd say, try to pick that up. And she would reach over and pick it up. And I would say, no, 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 no. Don't pick it up. Try to pick it up. She would give me a very, very strange look. And she would reach over and start picking. I say, no, 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 don't pick it up. Try to pick it up. And eventually she would have to say, I don't know what you're talking about. And I would say, the point is this. When you say, I'm trying, the brain says, wonderful. Try the rest of your life. I don't have to do a thing. Rather, we say, I'm already there. Present tense. Well, now you've got a problem because you're not there. You're still smoking. You haven't lost the weight. 
you're making the same amount of money. You haven't painted the four rooms. And what you're saying is, I am still there, but I'm not there. And the brain sits up and says, wait a minute. Now we've got a problem. Now, let's flip over what is called Gestalt psychology. Gestalt psychology simply says that the brain hates gaps. The brain hates gaps. So when Mary said, I am a non-smoker, her brain made sure that she was because that's what she locked on. Let me give you another illustration. When my father died and Mary and I were driving away from memorial service, he was very young. She said to me, if you die early, I'll kill you because I don't want to be a widow for 40 years. And I was about 40 pounds more than I weigh now. And so I said, okay, I need to lose this weight. So I would get up and I would run and swim and I would maybe lose two or three pounds in a week and gain it all back on the weekend. The reason I couldn't lose the weight is because of what I said to myself. I said to myself, you are a 240 pound man who's got to lose 40 pounds. When I said you are a 240 pound man, what did my brain say? Oh, okay, I believe what you tell it. You're 240 pounds and my job is to keep you at 240 pounds. And it did that for the next 25 years until I realized I was saying this all wrong and I began studying all this stuff. I realized I needed to put my resolutions and here's how they work in the present tense, not the future, in the present, I am 200 pounds and I look great. And my brain freaked out and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at the scale, look at the mirror. You don't weigh 200, 200 pounds, you weigh 240. And that's when I said, brain, I'm the boss. That's what I'm locking on to. I weigh 200 pounds in my brain right now. And after a couple of days, my brain said, you're really serious about this. Well, now we need to lose this weight. And it took about a year, but I did. Okay. So let's summarize this whole thing. When we say in a resolution, I will do this, I will do that. The brain says, wonderful. I really hope you do. I'm not going to help you a bit. I'm going to take a nap. But when you say, I am there, I am doing this, I'm already there right now, and you're not there, the brain freaks out. It says, wait a minute. You don't weigh 200 pounds, you weigh 240. But you're locking on to being 200 pounds. I need to help you lose that weight. And that's what it does. It stops you from smoking. It gets that fourth room painted. It brings in that money. Your brain finds a way. Wow. Mm. Wow, indeed. Yeah. So it's not just being positive, it's no. being now. It's you locking on are. to what you want right now not yeah. sometime in the future not i'll try not i will and i should you know what we do is we say i should do this and i should do that and the brain says yeah you really should yeah. you probably won't but you really should we should ourselves to death yeah we don't need to great insight great right. insight so basically yeah. make the make the affirmation of what you're going to do in the present, present tense present tense present tense. I'm already there. See yourself as doing it right now, today. So when you sit down for a meal, you see I'm eating like a 240 pound person, even though I'm 240. Mm. The brain says, yeah. And here's exciting. Now we get a neuroplasticity. What happens is you do that more and more and more. It gets easier and easier. Why? Because your brain's constantly rewiring itself. Millions mm. of times a day, it's rewiring itself. And so you see yourself at 200. 200 pounds and your brain's rewiring itself. And even though you're 240, 
it sees you at 200 and you start eating like a 200 pound person. And that's how you lose the weight. That's how you make the money. That's how you stop smoking. Okay, well, I can think of a couple of affirmations, which I'm not going to state right now, but uh, in another 90 days, when we're doing some more um, uh, of these recordings, uh, we'll bring it up and we'll see how we've done. Let's see okay. what happens. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, again, Steve, Good. thank, thank so you. Much. Uh, thank very you. Very for valuable information. Me. And um, uh, we look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.